Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to Loki K. Thanks for your support. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. As we uh, take our first tentative steps into the uh, nightmarish confines of the Tenebrous Deaths. Quite possibly the uh, single largest death trap in the entire Stolen Lands. At least if the uh, Gatekeeper is to be believed. And at the moment, I suppose we have no reason to doubt him. That said, uh, I should note that I've never really spent much time with this particular DLC. I mean, I did play a test campaign back when the game first came out, but this DLC was the final piece released, and by the time it came out, I had mostly moved on to other games, so uh, we'll be going in about 70-80% blind here. Anyway, you will uh, notice that I've already taken the liberty of setting most of our long-term buffs, basically anything that would last half an hour or more. So, let's go have a chat with Honest Guy, and we will delve into this dungeon. With any luck, we should be able to knock out at least the first couple of levels. A tall, bulky fellow with a shaved head studies you closely, paying special attention to your equipment. He grins. Hello, my friend. Do you want to look your finest? I have the best wares and the fairest prices in all the tenebrous deaths. And who are you? I am an honest guy. The lad strikes his chest proudly with his fist. I stand here honestly, welcoming heroes and seeing them off to their feats of glory. I honestly collect the gear from their breathless corpses, and I honestly sell it to the next heroes. You freely and calmly admit that you pillage corpses. Forgive me my skepticism, but do you really never do that yourself? You've never taken anything from an enemy you've killed, or a dead body you've found. Well, yes, but at least I don't tell passers that I'm waiting for the chance to rob their dead bodies. I mean, that's just rude. That is exactly why I am the honest guy, and not you. You know what? Fair enough. I can't really argue with that. Fine. Forget I asked. As you wish. So, are you buying anything? Fair trade is my principle. Does Zellerin allow your pillaging? What could he have a problem with? I'm betraying no one. I attack no one. I just pick up things that belong to no one and find them new owners. Perfectly honest, isn't it? And besides, that scaly worm would be so bored without me. He never has anyone to talk to. Hmm. I guess that is a good point. It's actually a wonder he hasn't gone insane already. All right, not really seeing anything here that catches my eye. Looks to be mostly basic magic stuff, with a few oddball specialty items mixed in. So we will just ignore that for now and get our first look at this dungeon.
It appears to have been a powerful artifact, but its magic has long since dissipated. Interesting. Zellerin didn't mention anything like that. And everything is purple. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, hey. Off to a good start. Five steps in and we've discovered a secret door. All according to plan. Difficulty checks seem pretty reasonable so far. Oh, okay. So, uh, more of an illusionary wall than uh, an actual secret door. Interesting. That seems very conspicuously placed. In due time. Gutsy Brawler. Immunity to fear and damage resistance one. Not bad. I mean, not great either, but I could see giving that to one of our secondary party members. All right, well, let's crack that other chest. We're not seeing any traps. I mean, there's not even anything notable in there. It really does feel like that was supposed to be a bait chest set there just to uh, lure us into something nasty. But maybe I'm overthinking this. Where at? Shouldn't be too much trouble. Ah, rat swarms. Still nothing to worry about. Thankfully, rat swarms are vulnerable to normal weapons. What's that? What a weird place for a trap. Anything else? Oh, I see. The door is just past it. That is not far. Okay, I guess we are clear. Next room. You see that? Oh. Interesting. Starting to see a bit of a pattern here. Still nothing too bad. Let's get that trap. Let's grab those pelts. It's only about 40 gold, but that's half a building point. Yeah. 
Shock Tongi. Intriguing. I think we saw a couple of Tongis in uh, the merchant's inventories outside, too. I guess they realized they needed to populate the game world with more magic exotic weapons. Looks like we missed some sort of secret room. We'll have to do another pass once we've raised our perception. Dire Wolf, also pretty trivial. Let's hang back. There might be more traps in the mist. Serves you right. Yep, that's what I thought. That's like Dungeon Crafting 101. The monsters themselves were pretty trivial, but um, I'm betting the trap would have been really nasty. Check the walls. Should be. All right, I think we're clear. It's really hard to tell what's supposed to be a secret door and what's just an oddity of the prop placement. Hmm. Let's hold off on the altar until we've cleared the rest of the room. In due time. Okay. What did that do? Oh, sacred bonus to armor class. All right. Interesting. I wonder if that's a one time bonus or if we can trigger that every time we come back to the dungeon. That's actually pretty useful. Multiple werewolves this time. I am prepared. We are definitely seeing an escalation. Anything is possible. Oof. Where at in the back is a caster? I'm guessing that's an alchemist. Trap noted. We need to bring someone around top left. Yeah, that's good. Nope, do not do that. I really feel like the pathing should take revealed traps into account. That would save us a little bit of micromanagement.
Difficulty numbers are definitely rising, but they're still manageable. A bunch of mid-tier monsters with garbage-tier equipment. Interesting. Applause, please. A low-tier amulet and... An interview with the weary traveler. Intriguing. Interview with the weary traveler. This ragged issue of the popular magazine, Absalom Reporter, features a gnome on the cover, colorfully dressed and smiling. The artist drew him in a haughty pose. His foot rests on the skull of a great reptile, and he proudly holds aloft a gem the size of his own head. In bold letters, the caption reads, An exclusive interview with famous treasure hunter, Barendabal Zesselwand. Sir Zesselwand, Haha, <laughs> why the formality? Please, just call me Ball. All right, Ball. You've recently returned from a long voyage to Garund. Well, not all of Garund. I mostly spent my time in Osirion and Katapesh, making short trips to Geb, Nex, and Jalmeray. What was the uh, aim of your expedition? <laughs> that is a fine question. As Desda is my witness, I've asked myself many times, what the devil made me go there? Especially each time I miraculously managed to extricate myself from yet another predicament. But you know what? The answer to the question is quite irrelevant. Yes, that's right. Let's say that initially I only intended to confirm a certain hypothesis regarding the architecture of pyramids. But before I even reached them, I was lucky to awaken a sphinx, who had been sleeping in the sand for centuries, and escape with my skin intact. I discussed philosophy with an oracle of Wajet, witnessed the rise of the triple sun, tasted nine new dishes, four drinks, and two new kinds of tobacco. The pyramid hypothesis turned out to be utter nonsense in the end, but at the moment I learned of this, I was already busily investigating the atrocities of a secret cult that was attempting to resurrect the remains of some ancient monster in the middle of Sothis. As you see, the nominal aim of the voyage scarcely matters at all. Forgive the blunt question, but rumor has it that, despite your life of adventure, even you couldn't avoid the eternal bane of gnomes. The bleaching. <laughs> what nonsense! Haha! <laughs> bleaching? Me? That's nothing more than the wishful thinking of those determined to be my adversaries. The southern sun bleached my hair, and as soon as they caught sight of this, the rumors started flying. Make no mistake, if anything kills me, it will be another adventure, and decidedly not a loss of the will to live. That's good to hear. So, what are your plans for the future? I will go north, to the River Kingdoms. I've been having very strange dreams lately. I won't share all the details yet to maintain the intrigue. But if even a part of them is true, then when I return, you'll be printing a tale of incredible adventure. Thank you for the interview, and good luck in your coming journey. Thank you as well. Wow, that is actually somewhat fascinating. It's a shame that uh, Zesselwand is just a generic boss for us to vanquish. He sounds like he uh, would have been a lot of fun. I'm guessing uh, random loot caches are how we're going to end up discovering the backstory for this place. Hmm. I would need to double check it, but I am fairly certain that's the exact same loadout that we saw on the Were Rat Alchemist we fought back in Act 1. Not that I am complaining. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're definitely seeing a very basic pattern here. All according to plan. Yep, more monsters just standing out in the middle of a room. Just letting the ink dry. You deserved it. <laughs> Explode, please. Thank you. Can't say I'm crazy about this dungeon design. I have to say, um, one of the things I really like about Pathfinder Kingmaker is... The amount of thought and care that goes into the environmental designs. There are a lot of subtle clues and environmental storytelling that gets worked into most of the handcrafted locations, which really makes this kind of the odd man out. There's our exit. I mean, I do believe the uh, dungeon as presented in the main campaign is actually fixed, but you can clearly see the procedural generation elements used to actually generate it. It's a series of miniature battle arenas, tenuously linked with a series of randomly placed corridors and illusionary walls, with the story told by static NPCs at the entrance and uh, fairly casually placed lore items. And what is this? Oh, it is a town portal. How very Diablo. Yeah, that, uh, that tracks. Follow my lead. Can't help but notice that everything seems to be covered in poison or acid. And we've got wear tigers. Definite linear escalation. I think this calls for a haste. Oh, whoa, hey, hold on now. Yikes, <laughs> and we've got another one incoming. Wow, yeah, that uh, could have easily ended up becoming a disaster. Those guys beeline straight for Silverleaf. In due time. We've actually got a couple of Breath of Life spells on tap in case of emergencies, but that doesn't matter if they take out our main character. If that happens, the game automatically reverts to our last save, so... We will uh, definitely need to be careful. Sure, I see the basic intent here. Lindsay? Thank you, Lindsay. I will protect. 
enemy approaching. Again, uh, given the relative weakness of the monsters, I have to assume it was the trap that was really intended to injure us there. Um, I'll also say I do feel like I'm being a little too negative here. Uh, I can definitely see the appeal of this DLC. It's like a combat challenge or an endurance challenge, as opposed to the more conventional story-driven aspects of the main campaign. There are a lot of people out there who like that sort of thing. It's just, uh, not, far. not what really drew me to Kingmaker. Another mess hall of some sort. Ferocious wolves. Set up to flank us, so. As it should be. Let's get our backs to the wall. Ah, concealed venom wolf. Very sneaky. That might have actually gotten us, if not for our mass delay poison. Let's go ahead and top off Doggo. Figured it was about time we got some use out of those wands, too. What can I say? I am a hoarder at heart. Six pelts. I think that's another two or three building points. Aha! Uh -huh. Hmm. Time-worn Aslanti belt buckle from the Tenebrous Deaths. Once belonged to a mysterious man, a collector of many artifacts. Hmm. So we've got something for the storyteller. That's intriguing. Weird placement for a trap, but sure, why not? Alpha Warg. I have to assume we have more hiding in the back. Let's finish them quick. Or not. Though, again, I uh, have to remember this is an endurance challenge. Aw, oh, we actually missed a pelt. Though, uh, let's be honest, that was probably only worth, like, 40 gold. <laughs> really? I'm glad they went through the trouble of creating a secret chamber with an illusionary wall and a deadly alpha warg to defend their 
semi-precious stones and wooden cutlery. Yeah, I think we've got that. But, just in case... Protection from spells. Nice. But only for the next five minutes. Um, trying to remember my train of thought. Oh, uh, I actually don't mind the trivial and semi-trivial encounters. I wish they made more sense in their placement, but... Every encounter wears the player down at least a little bit, even if it's just by nickel and diming them or wearing down the timers on their buffs, which in this case they are. Hold on a second, we've got more wear tigers, so you just know they're going to be line for Silverleaf. Oh, shoot. Okay. That guy has powerful area attacks, so let's see if we can neutralize him. Dang it. Okay, hold on. I think we can uh, blitz him. Well, shoot. We just lost Lindsay. I should have uh, tried to rush a healing spell there, but I'm, I'm not sure it would have actually made a difference. She was taking some massive damage. <sighs> That's actually really annoying. If she had just died like a normal person, Harem could have already had her back on her feet by now, and she could have rebuffed herself and we'd be ready to move on. But instead, she has teleported back to uh, Stag's Fall, so now we either have to go all the way back together, or we have to push on without her. Imbues the wearer's weapon with Orc Bane and Goblin Bane. And grants plus two AC against Orcs, Giants, and Goblinoids. But it's only an enhancement bonus, so I don't think that would actually stack with other magic armor. Oh, and there is our exit. Okay, let's double back and uh, clear the rest of this level, and then I think we're going to have to give some serious consideration to falling back. I will say that uh, I made a very basic misstep here. Everything on this level is obviously covered in acid. The first thing I should have done when we got here is thrown up a communal protection and resistance from acid spell. Better late than never. All according to plan. I believe I found something. Thankfully, uh, Silverleaf does have some modest thieving skills. Yeah, okay, that's actually pretty easily manageable. For now, anyway. In due time. Mug of the Weary Traveler. The name of its former owner, Ball Zess, is embossed on the handle of this old travel mug. It's dented, covered with mud, and some stinky gunk is dried to the bottom. 
but as soon as you touch it, your mind is overwhelmed with bright, euphoric visions. The mug transforms into a golden cup filled with fragrant wine. A gemstone inscription encircles the rim. Divine Emperor Berendabal Zesselwand, the first and only. You hear crystalline laughter and merry song, and frankincense drifts upon the air of violins. Forms of giant flowers surround you, and palaces of jewels and shining towers. This can only be the world of the Fae. Figures of their peculiar faces rise in songs of praise for their divine overlord. Interesting. I'm guessing we just caught a glimpse of the fantasy world that the weary traveler now finds himself trapped in. Can't really blame him for uh, not wanting to leave. More were rats? Sure. You just know there's going to be an alchemist in the mix, so let's keep an eye out for that. Let's go ahead and burn off some more buffs, too. I think we're almost done here. Keep your eyes open. Repent! Yep, Alchemist in the back. Let's get the range fighters on him. Nice. It's remarkable to see how easily we can handle that sort of thing now when it's something that literally killed us back in Act 1. <laughs> Dart plus three, huh? That is quite a find. Anyway, back to my earlier train of thought. Um, I do actually appreciate the sort of linear tiered encounters here. Again, I wish they were more organically blended, but one of the classic mistakes I used to see back when I ran a lot of tabletop games at the local gaming shops was uh, rookie game masters who would try to turn every encounter into an epic life-or-death struggle that left the players on the brink of death. This is even something that I would often see in uh, some of the demos or encounters of the week, that would be put out by the uh, actual game publishers to help promote their products, which is a terrible way to market your products, by the way. If you kill all your prospective players, they're not going to want to come back for more. And uh, to be honest, I do understand the mindset behind it. A game master wants the players to have to work for their victories. But if every single encounter becomes this life or death struggle, it's just not sustainable long term. In a game like Dungeons & Dragons, it means that the players constantly have to take a step back to rest and recover after every single encounter, which slows your adventures and your campaign and your dungeons to a literal crawl, and requires constant escalation, because if some random bandits who jumped your players on the way to the dungeon led to an hour-long epic Lord of the Rings-style battle, you don't want to de-escalate once they actually reach the dungeon. Oh, uh, as an aside, we are definitely going to have to come back here with Lindsay. Looks like we might have another secret door, too. It's really hard to tell with these maps, though. We'll have to uh, give it another pass when we hit level 10. At any rate, to uh, cut my rambling chatter about campaign design short, um, this dungeon does do that aspect of it right. It is wearing us down over time, we will have to retreat eventually, but we do still have a sense of tangible progress and 
it does feel like we are actually working for it. <laughs> I'm guessing this is the uh, requisite fire level. So let's prepare accordingly. We do have an emergency exit if we need it. All according to plan. Of course, we uh, do have to assume that the encounters are escalated again. Probably something fire based. Or not. That is a Cyclops. It should be. Definite escalation, but not fire based. A single crit from one of those giant great axes could potentially kill one of our party members outright. I'm also guessing that fire spells aren't going to cut it here. seeing reduced damage on those bombs. All right, well, that means that uh, roughly a third of our arsenal is useless on this level. But we might still be able to power our way through. is actually halfway decent placement. Trap DC is still pretty low, so we're still okay there. I will say the uh, treasure here <laughs> leaves something to be desired. I mean, we've found a couple of moderate value items, but nothing that really makes you feel like it was worth your time to come here. Cool. I'm glad we found that feather. Now we can write a book. That is not far. It is finished. Ah, here we go. Boogeyman's robes. Plus two bonus on all concentration checks. Plus five competence bonus on knowledge arcana. And a chance to frighten enemies on hit. With a fairly low will save. Now, that's a little more like it. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it does feel like a reward. Got another lore item, too. Diary of the Weary Traveler. A well-worn diary with a leather cover. The owner's name is embossed in tarnished silver. Ball Zess. In youth, our lives are a series of novel impressions. 
Your first spell, the first kiss, the first taste of victory, the first adventure you set off on without stopping to ask permission, and the first triumphant return. But then you mature and grow accustomed to every feeling. What was once novel has become mundane, and you reach a plateau. It's all rather boring, but at least you can pass through life with confidence. But it won't last long. Your well-trodden path begins to circle and descend. It is the beginning of old age, another time of new impressions. The first cracking joint, the first pang in your heart, your failing eyes, your thinning hair. Yes, our mortal bodies are traitors all, just waiting to stab us in the back. But what's truly scary are the other firsts. The first funeral of someone you cannot lose. The first compromise with one's conscience. The first friend to say, I've no wish to see you again. The first student who abandons you, or buries his talent, or dies in his prime, or turns your lessons to evil ends. The first time you look at your travel bag and desire to throw it into the fire and leap in behind it. I thought the bleaching couldn't touch me. Boredom in this beautiful world where there's always a place for new adventures? Impossible! Or so I believed. But it snuck up upon me, from where I least expected. My bleaching began when my soul grew numb from the number of scars it bears. The body could be rejuvenated by magic, but where can you hide when you disgust yourself? There's only one thing left, to do as the Fey do, turn your heart into a gemstone, on which the past can leave no mark. You'll never change and remember nothing, but continue in bliss forever. It must be a wonderful existence, though it may appear monstrous from the outside. But the saddest part is this. Even if one of the eldest would come to me and offer a return to the first world, that I may be careless and free, and were I to agree, then the me I am now, this old vagabond sick of himself, he will be no more. It would be just another death, albeit a pleasant one. I cannot win this game. Even if I somehow slip Phrasma's grasp, I will never trick Oblivion. And this is as it should be. It means that sooner or later I will escape from the disgusting old man I call myself. Wow, I, uh... I've got to say, I really liked that. I am uh, glad to say that despite any reservations I might have about the overall presentation of this dungeon, I do still enjoy the writing. I genuinely want to learn more about both the dungeon and its inhabitants. Again, I do wish it was better integrated into the actual dungeon design, but, um, I mean, it's a uh, give and take. This was... DLC, essentially stapled on to the main campaign based on a largely unrelated project to give players a procedurally generated repeatable dungeon encounter. That said, I uh, am glad we came here. I do look forward to finding more lore items. But I think we need to hit the pause button here and seriously consider collecting our Lindsay before we proceed any farther. I'll give it some thought and... Uh, We'll pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube and Twitch channels, 
the official social media feeds, or the official store pages over on Steam or on GOG. Links are in the description. <laughs>